Hello, Jess Too Good here, and today I'm taking a look at a very, very rare LEGO set. This is the LEGO Avatar The Last Airbender Fire Nation ship. This has 722 pieces, five minifigures, retailed for $50 when it was released back in 2006. Now, this and the SpongeBob theme were tested with each other to see which one would sell better. I believe they were only available in America, at least this initial release. And this was outsold by the SpongeBob one, so they didn't make more Avatar sets. Now, the other set is the Air Temple, which I did review last week. You can see it right there. Also, just click on the card. But I am going to be unboxing this, which is devaluing it by so much money. This is one of the rarest LEGO sets out there. Ooh, and it's very concerning because I don't see any tape to cut to open this without damaging the box. But let's figure it out. And this actually has two punch holes right here. Okay, never really see that with big sets in the United States, but that's a common practice in Europe. Funny for a set that apparently didn't release in Europe. Ah, oh, man, well, there goes, I don't know, this $700 set sealed. But the reason I'm opening this is, well, to say thanks to you guys for almost getting me to 500,000 subscribers, which I guess will happen next week. Huge thanks there. Also to celebrate the release of Avatar on Netflix. I've been doing a little rewatch myself. No stickers, but we have instructions. Some numbered bags, actually, which the Air Temple didn't have, but I just see ones and twos, so that's not really gonna be helpful in terms of numbered bags. Also, a lot of gray pieces. Uh, this might be a boring build. So yeah, there's only two numbers on the bags, and one of the bags for bag one is just a whole bunch of these gray two by six bricks. <laughs> I've never seen so many, and this was just what the bag was full of. So here is the set all built up, which yeah, you can see a lot of gray. And honestly, it does look better in person. Let's take a look at the minifigures. So here is the Aang minifigure of the set. It's the same one that's in the Air Temple set. No differences here, except this set doesn't have Momo the Lemur or his glider. This design I do kind of like for the face print, which has some printing at the back top. And the front face print works surprisingly well, even with its stylized eyes. Torso print's okay, though this one is a little bit more faded, even though this was brand new in the box. The legs is where it gets a little bit weird, because I think shorter legs or mid legs, if this was made nowadays, would work better for Aang. The printing doesn't cover the sides, it only covers the front, so it looks a little bit odd. There wasn't dual molded legs back then. And he also has his airbender staff as well. The other Avatar set, the Air Temple, included Sokka. This set includes his sister, Katara, who is exclusive to this set. The design of her face print is pretty interesting. I don't know if it really works. I think Aang's face looks a little bit better. It's just when they start coloring eyes, stuff looks a little bit off. I still think it looks off on Lloyd from Lego Ninjago for newer versions. No alternate facial expression, and she just uses the classic ponytail hair piece. The design of the torso is new and exclusive to this set. Well, I can't really say new since this came out in 2006. No leg printing either. Would have been cool to have some water bending pieces or something like that since she is a water bender after all. And of course, buying the Air Temple gives you most of the heroes for season one. I mean, I wish they would have done a buildable oppa, but it's not a big deal. And of course, since these were based off season one, we never got Toph. Zuko is also exclusive to this set. He has an exclusive face print, which even has his ponytail design on the back. This exclusive printed armor piece. No torso printing underneath the armor piece or on his legs. Now, I think the face print at the front actually works pretty well. It's just the lack of a ponytail at the top that looks very odd. It's just printed at the back there, and it doesn't look right. Now, there is a ponytail piece that would work perfectly that kind of came out nowadays. Okay, maybe it's not perfect, but it works a lot better than just the printed ponytail at the back. Or let me know in the comments, does this look bad? Now I'm starting to think this actually kind of looks a little bit ridiculous in its size for him. All right, it was, it was an alternative that looked better in my head. Can you blame me? The design of this little fire piece also indicates that he is fire bending right now. Included in this set is the fire bender from the Air Temple set. This is one I forgot to include a clip of in the review, even though I uploaded it later. So let me give this guy the proper attention that wasn't in the Air Temple review. This design uses an interesting visor attachment that isn't new to this theme, but was used with the Knight's Kingdom line that attaches to that standard Lego minifigure helmet piece. Now what's interesting about the helmet piece and this printed breastplate, which only appears in these two sets, is that this breastplate piece does not really fit well with the helmet on. It ends up making the helmet pretty loose if you ask me. It's not a big deal though because it still has a little bit of a connection there. 
Underneath, there's actually a really interesting face print that I like with the mask continuation design. Because in the show, this is actually a pretty accurate representation of the masks that the Fire Army use. Without making any new pieces, it's just that this middle section right here is a little bit inaccurate to the show. But other than that, it was actually some nice part usage on Lego's part. Much like Zuko, his torso printing underneath is unprinted. He has a flame to show that he's fire bending and unprinted legs as well. And finally, we have that Fire Nation soldier. This is, again, the same one that's in the Air Temple set, but not a bad one to army build because even in the show, they all have very similar face designs with the mustache and everything, so it's not a bad repeat. The dark red helmet here is actually exclusive to this theme, that coloring, which is actually a really nice color for that helmet piece. Underneath, you can get a better look at his face print, which is one-sided, and his torso is unprinted, and his legs are unprinted, that unprinted torso is covered by this breastplate here, which only appears in those two sets, and he has a black halberd as an accessory. Anyways, back to the build with the minifigures removed and everything, this looks like a warship, so it almost has that bland look and color scheme for a reason, I get it. And honestly, it looks a lot better in person and once it's all done, but the build process was quite annoying, only splitting it up into two bags and having a lot of the same pieces and building up that base. But I know nowadays this would please a lot of people that they didn't just cop out to some people and use those big molded pieces for the ship's base, but rather just used a ton of bricks. So I could see some appeal there, but let's take a close up look at the deck. Starting out at the very front of the ship, I like how they use this piece with a clip combination for the front bowsprit of the set, harnessed in place by one of those stud to stud rope connections. It just works pretty well. And going on to the front deck, just a lot of standing space, which is good for a set like this, so you could have minifigures standing around. And then we get to this little catapult right here. The catapult itself uses two by two bricks as ammunition in this dark red coloring. You could spin it around since it's on one of those swivel four by four bricks, I believe is a specific name for them. You can launch the catapult by pushing this part forward. And so to launch the brick, we could just put one there where you could actually use that uh, connection at the bottom to fit it in place. Let's see how far this could launch. Oh man, my hand got in the way. Second attempt. Okay, that was actually pretty far. But this section really is it for the deck that you can walk around on and such. Back here is the smoke funnels and also some interior parts that you could easily remove and play around on the inside, which we will in a bit. But either way, there's a mast up here with a specific part exclusive to the set with the Fire Nation flag. It's one of those film or plastic-like materials and not a cloth one. And down here, you could see some parts of the smoke funnel and tubing and such at the back, which I guess you could use as standing space as well. Since all around this ship, we still have a little bit of standing area for the minifigures at the sides and also some around this smoke part. But now it's time to take a look at the interior, which we'll take a look inside the ship by removing this tower part right here, this catapult section, and the smoke funnel section, which there's also this section at the front that can be removed for a holding cell. And this can also be accessed from the front right here or by opening up this trap door, which there's a small pathway to the inside of the ship. And we'll put that back in place. Before the inside down here, there's some interesting printed flags on both sides. There's also a small barrel right here, which holds this little shovel. And then there's also this removable boat. And I quite like this small little boat build, which is recognizable from the show. You could have a few minifigures standing there, maybe about uh, two if you want to really have it fitting or stuff it with three or four at the sides and everything. Just pull it out from the back where we also have this door that is clipped on. And to get a better look, it is a bit blocky, but I think the design of this is unconventional, not using some specialized pieces for a small little boat like this. And that kind of makes it unique in that way. So I actually don't mind it but that's it for this small boat build. And the boat covered up this small coal area, revealing the engine room front section here where they even have a flap. But let's put that boat back in place and cover it back up. And I'm quite surprised how well the smoke funnel part just fits covering this boat 
and that's helped by the use of this piece that's used in a lot of the airplanes from LEGO City. And none of these connections that are easy to remove use a stud connection, but rather just slide into place over these tiles. But there's that final section, which is almost like the tower on the ship. Now this part, we already pointed out uh, the cool flag design right here, but it can be opened right down the middle using some hinged pieces. And on the inside, there's little details. Right at the bottom, more of those exclusive printed banner pieces. And there's a doorway on each side, unfortunately no door. This design on the second level, I believe, is a little meditation area from some of those earlier episodes, but it's kind of hard to have Zuko sitting down in there since it's so cramped. And if you put him sitting at the edge here, it doesn't close the full way. So I don't know, I wish there was a little bit more space and maybe move that to a different section of the ship, like this side. But it's also used as support for this smokestack build. This side doesn't have too much to it, but I do like the one by two translucent red bricks for almost a window design. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, there's some gaps in these pieces. You didn't push it all the way down. Keep in mind, these are older pieces and they don't have the best connection. And I'll push it down, but they'll bend right back up. But there's this ladder that can lead you to this third level of the ship, which has more of those one by two translucent red pieces and more of those printed banners. And then finally, we have the ship wheel, which this ship wheel is connected via a Technic pin. This door right here is on a hinge brick connection, so you can move it out of place to walk out the exterior, which has a small little balcony-esque build, if you could even call it that. I don't know, I think they should just put this back into place. I don't know why this is a feature to open up. But that is it for this tower section. Let's put that back into place again, where it just rests on some tile connections. And these parts even rest on that little one by two vent tile. And there's just a few more details I want to cover. Some small build details, which are present on both sides of the ship. And then at the back, they have a very small build for a ship stern, which is clipped on using a one by one plate with the clip. And then this two by two tile in that dark red coloring. And right above that is the section where the boat is at, which this part is just clipped right at the bottom down there. I want to say, while I like that these parts just slide into place for play so you could easily remove them and play, I don't like how loose of a connection that is. Nowadays, they'll usually have one or two studs in place so that they just have a little bit of connection to keep it in place. But throughout this review, there were many times where I was putting this at a certain angle and those parts would just flop over and break. So I don't think they did it the best there, but. Let's move on from the ship onto the box and the final verdict. And we took a good look at the box in the beginning, but I did want to point out a few details here and there. Just like the Air Temple box, there's a small little comic at the bottom, which I really like the art style for, but yeah, there's not too much in terms of humor or, or story in this little comic. It just sets the scene for the ship. Also, the side of the box shows some interesting alternate builds, which I miss them showing this on Lego boxes. This is actually a pretty cool fortress, and I like this, where it's just a little obstacle course, it looks like. As for the instructions, there's an ad for LEGO Club Magazine and an ad for Shop at Home. But other than that, I don't think there's any other ads or anything like that. But it is interesting to see the styling with the instructions, where they do have some theming in the background, which looks pretty cool. So overall, the Fire Nation ship, I think, is easy to say as the worst of the two Avatar sets but I think the box doesn't sell this well. The rendering on the box looks a little bit off. It makes the ship look very cheap and very redundant. And while the set's build is very redundant, I think it makes for a pretty interesting warship design from LEGO. We don't get much military vehicles and this is more on the military side despite being a cartoony set. They didn't try to make it too colorful. It looks accurate to the show in that regard. And I think the actual build of this, when it all comes together, is quite fun to play around with, to have on display as an interesting design that you don't see too much from LEGO. And the minifigure selection, I think, is a little bit lacking when the other set has four minifigures and this has five, but this is a $50 set and that was a $30 set. And it's weird that they didn't just throw in Sokka in this set as well, but LEGO used to like splitting up minifigures throughout sets. They've become better with that throughout recent years. And as a whole, I would love to get more Avatar sets. That's something I think we could all agree on because it would be cool to see a modern look on this ship. 
But as it stands, I think the build of this holds up a lot better than some of these other blockier vehicles from licenses. Like for example, some of the 2006 Star Wars sets from the time, I think hold up worse than this. But to be fair, we don't have anything to compare this build to for a modern day build. But that's just my two cents on this Fire Nation ship. And that's it for Lego Avatar sets. Unfortunately, they didn't make more than these two, but if you guys haven't seen it, just check out that Air Temple build up there. But I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.